Hi, welcome to Artie Crafty Alchemy. Today I am filling a palette and swatching some De La Rowney paints. I'm the Artie Crafty Alchemist. Let's get started. This palette is a 20 well palette from Daiso. It was the bargain price of $2.80. If I'd had more money at the time, I probably would have grabbed more. I really like these palettes. Plastic feels a lot nicer than the other ones I got. My art shop has had these De La Rowney paints on sale, clearing them out, and I didn't buy these all at once. <laughs> Over the span of about two months, I went in once a week or so and bought a paint or two. Unfortunately, they only had phthalo blue green shade, so that is my only blue right now. Hopefully I can pick up another one at some point. I am going to fill my palette. I have Nickel Tighten It Yellow. Oh, I think I need to give this a little bit of mix in the tube. It has separated a little bit. Not ideal. I'm going to give that a good mix around so that it can mix with the binder. Nickel Tighten It Yellow is Nickel Tighten It Yellow PY53. Next I am doing Permanent Yellow. Nickel Tighten It Yellow is a Series B colour as is Permanent Yellow. Permanent Yellow is Quinophthalone Yellow PY138. Next is Gamboge Hue. Gamboge Hue is a Series A colour and it looks like I need to give a little bit of a mix. And it is made from Arialide Yellow, 10G PY3, and Nickel Dioxine Yellow, PY153. Next is Cadmium Orange Hue. Again, this is a Series B. Again, some separation. I need to make sure this is well mixed in because in our Aussie climate, if you don't make sure it's well mixed in, you'll end up with the binder sliding all about the place. This is Orange PO62 and Aralamide Yellow RN PY65 and it was a Series B. I believe this is the first orange tube of paint that I've bought on its own because I don't usually buy oranges. This is Permanent Red. Permanent red is Pigments Pyrol Scarlet PR254 and Diketto Pyrolo Pyrol PO73. That's an interesting name. I've not actually heard that one before. Gamboge Well and this one have ended up a little full. Next is Quinacridone Red. In red is Series C. So that one cost me a little bit extra. But they were all 40% off. Australian wise this was $17 for the Series C and for Series A and B it was $11 ish. Thereabouts. Before I get into too many too dark colours I'm going to do some yellow ochre. These wells on the top are not quite as deep so I'm going to need to push this down a bit. Yellow ochre is quite thick. Yellow ochre is Yellow Iron Oxide PY42. I've done these in the wrong order. That's okay. <laughs> I would have swapped Alizarin Crimson and Perylene Maroon. I don't know what possessed me to get both Perylene Maroon and Alizarin Crimson, but mostly I think it's just because you can't see them when you're in the shop. So you need to buy whatever takes your fancy and hope that you get colors you like and now this has ugh, separated into a gluggy mess wow that looks like blood gross <laughs> oh dear i'm trying to stir that around i might have to go and find another toothpick in a second but i don't know where any more are just got very lucky finding this one Paraline maroon again is series c and it is Perylene PR179. Next up is Alizarin Crimson. Well, there is a big difference between the colours. As you can tell, I'm not that knowledgeable on paint yet. I'm still learning. Alizarin Crimson Hue is Series B. Quinacridone PR209 and Perylene PR179. Next is Permanent Magenta. I really like the colour on here, so we'll see what it looks like when I squeeze it out. Got some separation again. When there's that much separation, I just 
squeeze a little bit extra of the paint out so that I can mix it really well. Permanent magenta is quinacridone PV19. And then ultramarine violet is series A. It is sodium alumino sulfosilicate PV15. Again, another pigment I've not heard of before. Next we have phthalo blue green shade. This is series A again. Now the series A and B colours were the same price in my art shop. we put a bit extra of the blue out seeing as it's the only blue I have right now. Phthalo blue green shade is phthalo cyanine blue PB15 colon 3. Next is Cobalt Green Deep Series C. This is one that I kept umming and ahhing about. I wasn't sure if I wanted to buy it. We've got separation again. These are certainly well filled. Oh, some are blowout. Just squeeze some of this out. I'm not 100% sure what the colour's going to look like. But it just looks so pretty on the thing and the, the colours aren't. 100% accurate representations, but I thought I would buy it and give it a go. And at the moment, by the looks of it, I'm not regretting that decision. It looks very pretty in the palette. Just cleaning up the mess on the tube. Pigment numbers for this one is Cobalt Chromite PB36. And that's another pigment I'd not heard of, so I'm learning some stuff. Always good. Next is Raw Umber. And again, these wells on this side are a little shallower so I'm not going to put a whole lot in and I'm going to have to spread that out mix it because it did separate just a little bit raw umber is series a natural iron oxide PBR 7 and then I have neutral tint which is another Series A colour. I only have a small 5mm tube of Windsor & Newton neutral tint, so I wanted to get some more because it's very useful. Unfortunately, it's separated, so I need to try and get some actual paint in there. And now I'm going to have to mix all that together and try and get it to lay flat. This neutral tint is pigments red iron oxide pr101 mars black pbk11 ultramarine blue pb29 this one's going to take quite a while to dry because it has liquefied that's my palette of de la rowney artists watercolor paints do need another blue definitely feeling a hole there but we'll see how it goes. I have my swatches all stamped out. This is a stamp from the Reject Shop from the Let's Get Together collection. It's going to grab a small amount of paint and drag it out. I am all over the place. So next is permanent yellow. Where is permanent yellow? Permanent yellow is on this sheet because I ran out of space on the other one. Beautiful and vibrant. Next is Gambo Hue. Gips around because I bought all of these at different times. Wet a little bit of these paints go an awful long way. Next is Cad Orange, which is here. I'm just picking the tiniest bit up on the tip of my paintbrush. I don't know if you can see that. It is just the smallest amount on the tip of my paintbrush and that is what I'm using to colour these. Next is permanent red. It's all the way down here. Again, just picking a small amount up with the tip of my paintbrush. Still had too much water on my brush. I've reached the maximum recording time, stupid 30 minute limit. So I'm not sure where we got to, but I have swatched Perylene Maroon and Alizarin Crimson. I think I just put the wrong one in there. That Alizarin Crimson? No, we're good. So that's Alizarin Crimson Hue. I thought I'd put the wrong colour in there. Next is Permanent Magenta. And I really like this colour. Very pretty. Next is Ultramarine Violet having trouble getting that to want to cooperate. Have to see what that is like when it dries. Very milky. Next is Phthalo Blue Green Shade. 
very strong as you'd expect of phthalo blue. Next is going to go with yellow ochre. I will hold off on doing the ones on the other page for a minute. Washes out into a nice glowy colour. Then I have neutral tint. I'm just going to give these a blast with a heat tool and I'll be right back. Now is cobalt green deep. Very pretty colour. I think it might be opaque. I need to start adding opacity ratings on these, I think. And then raw umber. So for get that one there, that one's just a extra one. We have the cadmium orange, cobalt green deep, permanent yellow, raw umber, nickel titanate yellow, yellow ochre, quin red, perylene maroon. Neutral tint, phthalo blue green shade, permanent magenta, gamboge hue, alizarin crimson, ultramarine violet, and permanent red. This is a very orangish red. This one looks like it's bordering on coral, very close to a coral colour. This very deep dark in mass tone perylene maroon, and then it fades out into a brownish red. Really like the luminosity of the yellow ochre. Love the permanent magenta, very pretty. The raw umber's almost dry. My first orange, and it's quite nice. Don't often buy cadmium colours. I just remembered I was going to add an M. Graham paint to this palette, and I've forgotten, but that's okay. I'd rather keep that palette like it is, and I will add the M. Graham somewhere else. I hope you enjoyed this first look for me of the De La Rowney Artists watercolours. If you did, please don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to see more content like this, and hit the bell notification to know when new videos come out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. I was putting my paints away, and found another De La Rowney paint. So I'm going to add it in here. I found Burnt Umber. And I have made my little swatch down here for it. I'm going to add it to my palette if I can get the lid off. Now I rem remember I have squeezed some of this into a pan. Of course I'm not sure off the top of my head which palette I put it in. I think I put it in with the Van Gogh paints that I have by mistake. There was a tiny little bit of separation in this one so I'm just going to make sure it's well mixed. This one is PBR7 Natural Iron Oxide. It says it's a transparent colour. And there is the swatch of burnt umber. You can see that it is a very different colour to the raw umber. I think I actually like the burnt umber better than the raw umber. The raw umber is a more dirty colour to me. <laughs> Whereas this is a lot cleaner. Now I've got one more to add to the family. I don't have a lot of spaces left on this palette. That one was hidden in my paint box. I've actually had to rearrange it all to fit this one in. I have these containers from Kmart. Opro are my Daniel Smith colours. These two are now De La Rowney colours. I had to split them into two because they're all 15mm tubes and there's so many. Windsor & Newton, Van Gogh, Random, there's a couple of Aquafine that I was given free, a M. Graham Cad Red that I haven't even tried yet, and then I've got one spare spot that I'll have to put my Art Spectrum paints in, and then maybe I guess I'll have to stop buying paints. <laughs> Start a new box. Anyway, that is a look at all the colours I have now that I'm aware of. I don't think there are any more hidden. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.